If I wasn't a fighter, I'd be a... Uh, I would, I'd probably be in the, uh, you know, part of the dope game, maybe the rap game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, if I wasn't a fighter, maybe I'd have something to do with the sport. <laughs> something like that. Fuck it, I like the first answer. We're gonna take the first answer, Chuck. <laughs> Gentlemen, boys and girls, we'd like to welcome you inside the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most finding Nemo, aka Nemo Hoes. And today on my show, I got one of mixed martial arts greatest fighters coming from Stockton, California. Close friend of mine. You may know him from knocking motherfuckers out and being banned from the league for doing what we do. He's here today to have some fun and talk about it. Give it up for my man, Nick Diaz. Nick, what it do? What it do? Slow motion, how you been, loved one? All right. So tell me what you've been doing since the last time we seen you in that uh, octagon. Yeah, no, I just been really just making the rounds, trying to help out um, in camps when, you know, I got guys that, that I train, have training, you know, I'm training with, they have camps, so. I jump in a little bit on, you know, and help out a little bit. But uh, I've been, you know, giving a little seminar here and there, going, um, you know, I had 500 people show up to a protein shop one day. I was just kind of mm. did a little, you know, just doing what I can do, something rather than nothing. Uh, so you, you like more or less like a mentor, and you like sparring, and you still stand in the game because the people still love you, and they still want to they wanna hear what you have to say, basically, right? Yeah, well, I was, I, I think I was like, someone told me that, uh, the other day that I was like 49, or 45 or something like that on the on the UFC roster, the first, you know, 45 people. Mm. So now they got like, you know, 600 or 1,000 or whatever, you know, whatever number it is, I don't really, I don't really. Yeah, remember. but you're part of that original. Couple numbers. That, that, that lineup that first came out. You know, the yeah, origins, yeah, yeah, you know, early, the inspiration. Early, yeah, early on. Yeah, you show people how to really get it in because, you know, coming from a small town like Stockton and, and you know, doing your thing, representing, you always stay down representing, taking on whoever, Whoever they put in the ring, you got in with. It really wasn't even no uh, weight class when you first started, right? Yeah, well, no, I was right when they started weight classes. Well, they had a few weight classes, and then they added a 55 division. And right when they added that 55 division, the lightweight division, mm -hmm. then, I, then that's when I started fighting at uh, Yeah, because the, the weight was like off. Like, you could be like 20 pounds heavier than somebody. Yeah, you could be, yeah. You know, that was, it, was good, it was a good show back then when it was like, they did, kept it like that in Japan for a long time, and yeah. they, they pride it. Did you ever see Hoist Gracie fight? Yeah, oh yeah, that's how I got that's how I got started putting people in triangle chokes. Oh, you went to go train with him? So I wasn't I'm not really fanatical about fighting now. I'm not like, oh I love to fight. But when I started I was more like, okay, why don't you know people nobody wanna watch it? You know, and then I'd go and I'd I'd train. I, I found this place where where people were doing um where there's this guy Steve Heath, he was a blue belt in jujitsu. Uh and he had learned from uh, Caesar Gracie. Mm. That's where you guys blue and the pops. Uh, yeah, our cousin. So they're all cousins and family and Gracie. So I already knew what I was looking at when I watched, you know. And nobody else wanted to, was, you know, a big fan, UFC fan. But I, you know, I did a little bit of karate and a little, you know, a little bit of boxing. So I was watching and then uh, I started training there. And uh, I'm telling my friends, like, look, I'm choking these big old bodybuilders. <laughs> pro Because everybody that was in MMA early on, they all was like pro wrestlers. And they was getting their it ass was all like pro they wrestling getting choked and, out. Yeah, and there was no weight classes and it was, you know. But so I, the people that were in there were some big dudes, and I was like six fifteen, choke, putting a choke on them. So I was like, okay. The submission hold, the Gracie brought yeah. the submission holds to light where people didn't underestimate the little guy no more because the submission could break that big guy down. Are you good at submissions? I was in competition like for all the way uh, fifteen till I was like uh, I think twenty two or something. I was doing high level like uh, competition like Pan Ams. All this, it was different though. Now they have the whole, you know, I, B, J, J, F, <laughs> whatever, you know, it's yeah. different now. It's, it's, a, it's a business now. When you yeah, did it, before it was, a sport. it was just like, you know, it was different it was rules and everything, yeah. You was in the beginning where it was basically yeah. bare knuckles. It was, you know, it was brawling. Did you ever go to uh, London and get out in one of those bare knuckle fights that they have out there? No, not in London. No, no, that's I never, what I never went. Yeah. That's where the motherfucking pinnacle is at. You yeah. know that, right? <laughs> in London, right? No fucking for real, yeah. dog. No. They got some shit where they got a motherfucking underground and it'd be a bunch of old motherfuckers in there and this, they got this one dude, he's a cold champ. 
When this motherfucker show up, he get drunk as a motherfucker, and he beats anybody that he get in the ring with. I mean, did they pay good? <laughs> no, I don't think it's a, it's a big payday. It's a lot of betting going on, but yeah. I don't think the fighters get none of that cut. They're, yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what did they suspend you for? Because what I was told was what you got suspended for, normal athletes like in the NFL or the NBA would get like a couple of games suspension to keep continuing on with they season, but they did something yeah. to you that was a little different. The thing is, is I, I never got, sus I never tested positive for, I never, I never, um, you know, and that was the verdict in the end, because then, you know, when you go over and you make an appeal and it's mm -hmm. like, okay. So in the end was, oh, you filled out the application wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, last time I filled out the application right, I was supposed to fight Eddie Alvarez way back. Eddie Alvarez was about to fight that Conor McGregor right now. I was supposed to fight him way uh, back when I was fighting it, you know, uh, in, a, in lightweight and in strike force. And uh, I filled out the application wrong. And so Armando Garcia, who was like the lead, you know, the dude of the um, NSAC back then, he pulled me from the card. He did a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I think they got rid of his ass. But uh, behind some paperwork. Yeah, yeah. So he pulled me because I put, you know, oh, what'd you do in the last like, you know, month? And I was like, well, you know, this is out of competition, but you know. <laughs> and then so I, because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna test, and then, but I'm under the limit. So what, you know? Yeah. What's so the it's all the kind of to me. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a scam, but whatever. Have they? Lifted that and allowed you to get back. Yeah, into because the shared Sunny and Cher. Yeah, Sunny and Cher, Cher. So she. Oh, that's Because Cher. they had a. Um, a yeah, Cher from Sunny. Yeah, and they Cher. made a petition to turn the uh, suspension over. So then she put a, a retweet or something. You know, mm -hmm. um, tweeted that out and then. Oh, she got behind I started you. Started getting a little bit of play. Yeah, she did. Shoot. Shout on out Twitter. to her homegirl yeah, Cher. Out. Have you met her? No, my mom's always a big, huge fan, though. I was always, you know, I well, was, you know, was seen all our business, movies. Well, man. Yeah. Look here, man. When we was kids, she was something special with that long hair, man. You understand me? Her and Sonny Bono. You dig? Cher, what it do? Holla at my nephew in real life. <laughs> you grew yeah, up in Stockton, man. Stockton, is that considered Central California or, or Northern California? It's, it's, nor it's Northern, out north. But they're not, there's not a lot going on. I mean, there's not, I mean, there's not, there's, there's, you know, if you go to school, I guess, and you do, you know, for me, I'm, I, I just, I had training. I always had training. I had three to five fights a year, uh, 37 fights, mm. 17 years later, all I was thinking about was weight, what am I going to eat? I had two, five, six-year girlfriends, and, you know, I just stayed really Do small. girlfriends mess you up when you, um... Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Is it because of their attitude or is it because of their sex? No, no, that, I, I, you know, it's, you, you got anything you're dealing with, you got to just, you know, moderation. Do you, do you think the sport has grown since the day you liked it to the day you stopped fighting? Has it grown? Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's, I mean, it's, it's been multiplied. I mean, now you got girls, you know, mm -hmm. recognizing me or, or, you know, because they watch, Oh, so the bitches when and then, you walk in. Well, you girl, know when you walk Nick, up and then. That's Nick when Diaz. They, when bitch, you don't know. That is Nick. And then Nick be on some. What's happening? They. Want me to knock a motherfucker out? They're like, I never heard of you before, right? But then they're like, <laughs> have you ever heard of what? Have you ever heard of Ronda Rousey? I'm like, the, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, she, yeah, she the beat woman. your ass. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I'm just saying fighting. it brings, like, I get a lot more attention now. I mean, like, Who is your favorite fighter today? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Carlos Condit. Carlos Kerner? Uh, no, no, he's a nice guy though. But uh, let me, uh, my brother. Nate? Yeah. Nate Dog. Mm -hmm. Stylistically though, I know I always liked Carlos Condit because he, you know, amounted to at least somewhat of the level of, of, of doing what I do. Um, I mean, you know, but I, I think he stands a little upright. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs to. This past year, uh, we lost. Kim Bo Slice. What was your relationship like with him? We was always we was always hanging out at the Strike Force events or the oh, Elite, Elite XC back in the day. Yeah, we, smoked, we was just smoke blinds. For real? Yeah. Kim Bo Slice was a bad was, motherfucker. We would headline the whole show. It would be me and Kimbo Slice. It was it was. It, I mean, I know it was the Kimbo Slice show, but it was it was me and the Kimbo Slice show. That's right. Because I was the MMA fighter that was bringing the MMA crowd, and he was the, the you street know, fighter. He that was the street fighter bringing the street crowd. And, then, and both of y'all was dogs, y'all was kicking. Yeah, and we was, you know, in uh, Texas and, and uh, out here in L.A., I think out here in L.A. before. See, that's dope yeah, shit right of, there, man. Yeah. 
Kimbo Slice, rest in peace. Real motherfucking nigga. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. Hi, this is Stormy Friends reporting to you live from the beautiful Seattle, Washington. Sunday through Saturday, our weather's looking a little bit bipolar, kind of like a lot of the women out here. Sunday through Wednesday, it's gonna be super hot, so you wanna make sure you break up with your girlfriend uh, because there's gonna be a lot of hoes out there with some skimpy outfits, and I know all y'all fellas like that, so make sure you break up with her. And then you wanna make sure you call her back on Thursday because on Thursday, it's gonna get a little chilly and you're gonna wanna get back with her because you're gonna, it's gonna be cold. Will you be fighting in the next nine months? As far as fighting goes, I'm just waiting for you know these guys to do something and you know I don't know add some character to their lifestyle. Maybe they need to paint their hair like people used to do. Yeah, for real though. You know, I was always throwing a fit about it, right? Like somebody I'd fight somebody, they had their hair painted, and I would be <laughs> like, "This fucking." It's not enough that this guy asks to win a fight against me. You know, he's going in there to fight, but he's he's got to do it with his hair like being on blast, like. Pink Mohawk, and he's doing like making a scene. Just a wild man, right? Yeah. Making a scene before the scene. I felt bad though. I fought this one dude who did that, and then I beat him up pretty bad. And then I didn't even really, I don't even think I shook his hand after the fight. And then I feel bad about that. And I think I wrote him, I think I even direct messaged him one time or something like that. I was like, hey man, sorry for. <laughs> but he didn't message me back. <laughs> I got some questions I want to ask you called Everyday People. AKA real nigga shit. And you can just answer to the best of your ability. What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up? I don't know, maybe hit the weed, get out on a run, if I could. Hot or cold? Uh, cold. In and out or fat burger? Uh, fat burger. Denny's or IHOP? Denny's. Oreos or Chips Ahoy? Uh, neither. <laughs> Favorite sports team? The 49ers. Weekends or weekdays? Week, weekdays, nowadays. How many times a day do you think about sex? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, occasionally. That's a great, good answer, good answer, good answer. <laughs> um, if you were stuck on an island for a whole year and could only listen to three albums, what would they be? Probably Deftones, Adrenaline, because I just went, you know, run here one time. I don't know. I'm doing. I'm doing decisive. I, I just want to throw. I just threw. I had to th I have to throw one in there. So it's close to the <laughs> my mind. I, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? To I, I'd be like Wolverine, where you just heal again. When they shot yeah. him, and that motherfucker just bam. You yeah. know, all of a sudden I don't, his head I don't need the claws. I'll take the claws too, but I don't. I don't need the claws, but I, I'll take those too. Okay, now this right here is called finish the sentence. I'm gonna start it, you finish it. I always wake up. Um, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I look for blank in a woman. Understanding. Mm. That was nice. My favorite position is? Quarterback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good shit, that was a great answer too. <laughs> My name is Nick Diaz, and I'm a ninja. He's a ninja, baby. Give it up for my guest, the one and only Nick Diaz, for stopping by the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most finding Nemo, AKA Nemo Hoes. Nick, can't wait to see you back in that motherfucking octagon doing your thing, putting hands on somebody. In the meantime, shout out to his brother, Nate. Nate, we gonna see you on the three-peat when you and McGregor do y'all thing, man. I might have to walk you out, you dig? Until we meet again, DPGC.